celebrate uh, the birthday of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is indeed a very great night. And so tonight, let us get into prepare ourselves for this feast day by acknowledging our need for the Savior, and uh, especially for in this capacity is to forgive us from our sins. So let's take a moment then to acknowledge our need, our need for that. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh in the splendor of the Father. Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God, but also the Son of Mary. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are a Prince of Peace. Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. As a young man 
marries a virgin, your builder shall marry you. And as a bridegroom rejoices in his bride, so shall your God rejoice in you. The word of the Lord. And be to God. The response. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David my servant. Forever will I confirm your posterity and establish your throne for all generations. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Blessed the people who know the joyful shout. In the light of your countenance, O Lord, they walk. At your name they rejoice all the day. And through your justice they are exalted. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. He shall say of me, You are my Father, my God, the Rock, my Savior. Forever I will maintain my kindness toward him, and my covenant with him stands firm. Forever, Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Paul reached Antioch in Pisidia and entered the synagogue, he stood up, motioned with his hand, and said, Fellow Israelites, and you others who are God-fearing, listen. The God of this people Israel chose our ancestors and exalted the people during their sojourn in the land of Egypt. With uplifted arm, he led them out of it. Then he removed Saul and raised up David as king. Of him he testified, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will carry out my every wish. From this man's descendants, God, according to his promise, has brought to Israel a Savior, Jesus. John heralded his coming by proclaiming a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was completing his course, he would say, what do you suppose that I am? I am not he. Behold, one who is coming after me, I am not worthy to unfasten the sandals of his feet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Shone around them, 
and they were struck with great fear. And the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you, who is Christ and Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly host with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. The Gospel of the Lord.
put it aside, or put it up in the attic, or put it away someplace, but never use it again. And he began to second guess himself a lot. But then he met somebody who gave him good advice, somebody from a different culture, from Africa. And he talked to his friend from Africa about it, and his friend gave him some good advice. He said to him, you're trying to do somebody else's job. Do your own. Your task is to give the gift. Let them take care of receiving it. His advice was well received because the priest then began to choose gifts that he thought would be right for each person. He did not worry, he did not worry a lot about whether they were, how they would be accepted because he knew he had done his part. His job was to open his heart and to give and let the relatives then take care of the rest of it. I think we can make a comparison with that, what God has done for us. He has given us the perfect gift. And I suppose like everything else, we can, we can kind of say, you know, reject it, or we can receive it half-heartedly, or we can, you know, treat it in many different kinds of ways. But one thing I know for sure, if we accept the fact of the incarnation of God becoming man, is that he has given us the ultimate gift because he has given us himself. How could he give us a more perfect gift than the gift we have received, which would be God himself? I think it's important for us then to realize that God gave us the perfect gift and probably the onus then is on us. He has done his part. God will never second guess what he has done. I know I'm speaking kind of uh, in a way about God, maybe I'm you know, trying to express something here. The whole idea is that God, you know, will not second guess himself because he's given us the perfect gift. And it's up to us then to just step in line as it were and accept this gift for what it truly is. And now this gift that God gives us, we cannot find it under a Christmas tree. You cannot package it and put it there. But at the same time, it's a gift, a great gift, because it helps us to, uh, to want to be givers in many different ways. If we accept this gift from God, the gift of His Son, Jesus, if God can share His own Son with us, but then why can't we do something similar? Can we not do likewise? No, we can't. And so I think if God is a giver of gifts, it means that we kind of have to imitate that in our own lives. And you might say, well, I don't have much to give, you know, I'm pretty limited in my talents. I don't have a lot to offer to anybody. Now, I don't think we have to undersell ourselves either. Perhaps we can give the greatest of all gifts. True, they're not material gifts maybe, but they are real gifts. A few of them come to mind. How about the gift of listening? How much, how much that is needed? You know, people sometimes want to, um, to speak and to talk. And for other people then, to be just be able to listen to them, to hear them out, to talk to them, and to especially to listen to people. Wouldn't that be a wonderful gift to have, the gift of listening? Or how about the gift of an embrace, the gift of laughter? Our world needs it so much, we tend to take everything so seriously. And I think I'm talking here is not just a phony kind of a laughter. It's something that comes from within because of, of what God has done for us, giving us His Son. Uh, the gift of a letter. Uh, the gift of a compliment. Uh, again, many people are starved. Nobody appreciates them. And they can kind of say, well, you know, I've been around for so long, nobody cares. And so to be able to just bridge that gap, to thank people, compliment people for what they do for us. Well, the, the list would go on and on and on. And but the idea here is that if we accept Christmas as a, as a gift from God, Jesus comes to us as a gift, then we need to share with others like he has shared with us. So this Christmas, we greet one another with this very familiar salutation. Merry Christmas. By Mary then, let us celebrate the birth of the Lord. Be joyful, not just because of a baby was born, 2,000 years ago, but because God has entered into our world to draw us into his presence. How can we not be merry and happy if we take that for what it really is, 
We cannot be any other way. And so we can wish people a Merry Christmas. And that salutation, that greeting, is a very, very apt and a good one to make. Oh, what, what, what does the psalmist say? I got this wrong at the first Mass uh, I said tonight, but I'm trying to remember the verse, but one of the psalmists said, it says it. It's in the responsorial psalm for today. And maybe we said it already. Uh, something about the salvation of God. You know, that just, all mankind have seen the salvation of our God.
accept our gifts on this joyful feast of our salvation by our communion with God made man, may we become more like him who joins our lives to yours. For he is Lord forever and ever. Amen. And the Lord be with you. <laughs> Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. And Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks for Jesus Christ our Lord. In the wonder of the incarnation, your eternal word has brought to the eyes of faith a new and radiant vision of your glory. In him we see our God made visible, and so we're caught up in the, in the we're caught up in the love of God we cannot see. And so all the choirs of angels in heaven, we proclaim your glory and join in their Amen. 
of the kingdom that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I need peace, I peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of that peace.